Don't miss Clownfish Studios' latest crowdfunder, Crimson Wren Volume 1 on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Thaddeus Wendell's greatest treasure is out there, and it's up to young mage Crimson Wren and the crew of a rundown airship called the True North to find it. But will they find it in time? Crimson Wren of the True North is a race against the clock filled with action, adventure, comedy, and heart. This is a brand new manga-style graphic novel from Clownfish Studios. Go to crimsonwren.com or check it out on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. It ends on November 18th. That's November 18th. And now on with the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk about Final Fantasy 16. Apparently it's too white. Yes, this, uh, this upcoming game developed by Japanese developers uh, taking place in what looks to be a, a version of Europe. All right, it's, it's definitely a more uh, European flair than, than some of the uh, last couple of Final Fantasy games. Uh, apparently this game is too white. It's too white and, and Kotaku and Twitter just will not have it. We're going to talk about this because you know, this is a very typical... Uh, discussion that comes up on these gaming blogs, which is why most of them are being bought out, shut down. Journalists are getting laid off uh, because they create these nonsense articles about non-issues and they try to create controversy where there is none. Uh, I don't think many people in the real world were complaining about Final Fantasy 16 being too white. I, I mean, I guess if you want to have a stereotypical black dude with uh, a fro and a chocobo living in it again that's cool i guess weren't they complaining about barrett being a stereotype too i don't know let's let's talk about this before we get into it any further uh please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys uh over 280 almost 281,000 subs thank you so much for the support uh greatly appreciated we do like games we like final fantasy actually final fantasy is one of my favorite game series of all time um, that being said, I haven't looked forward to a Final Fantasy game in the main series for quite a while. I think the last game I looked forward to was actually 12, which also had a, a very uh, European bent to it. Um, however, Fran was my favorite character and she was neither white nor a human. Anyway, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, 16 is coming out at first. I was kind of like, eh, this looks like every Western uh, RPG ever. And then I saw the last trailer. I'm like, no, 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 I'm sold. I, I actually want this one. Uh, I actually want to play Final Fantasy 16 uh, for the first time in a very, very long time. So Kotaku, they've got complaints. And then we're going to talk about uh, Square's response. Now, there's a little bit of backstory here because Square apparently, according to Bounding in the Comics, uh, has been making comments that they're trying to appeal to a global audience. That being said, I don't think just making... Uh, European characters brown skinned is necessarily appealing to a global audience. However, there are concerns that Square is going to get censor happy, which they have done. We've seen some of their translations, you know, over the last couple of years, uh, you know, some of the stuff, you know, some of the stuff they've censored, you know, they're doing what they think they should be doing based on feedback they're getting from uh, their fellow developers in California. You know, which is a grave mistake. <laughs> you should never listen to California. No, I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I spent half my childhood there. Um, all right, so Kotaku. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 dev has a terrible answer for why the game is so white. Yoshida feels that racial diversity would be a violation of narrative boundaries. Two weeks ago, Square Enix released a new story trailer for its upcoming RPG Final Fantasy 16, and it looked awesome. There's just one noticeable problem. There doesn't seem to be a single non-white character in it. So IGN asked the producer about whether or not the game would feature any black people or other people of color. Unfortunately, oh God, this is so, this is so Kotaku. Unfortunately, his response made me go, yikes, in real life, oh my God. Yoshida explained that the fancy world of Valistia? Valistia? Is that what called? I want Ivalice again. Come on. Can't we go back to Ivalice? Valistia was based on medieval Europe, and they wanted to limit the world culturally and geographically. Valistia, Valistia, whatever it is, was never going to realistically be as diverse as, say, modern-day Earth or even Final Fantasy XIV. 
he said, as if he was being asked to incorporate every race on the entire planet. Ultimately, we felt that while incorporating ethnic diversity into Valistia was important, an over-incorporation into this single corner of a much larger world could end up causing a violation of those narrative boundaries we originally set for ourselves. So basically, they're saying this is a medieval Europe-themed Final Fantasy, unlike a lot of the entries uh, lately, which have been more sci-fi, more uh, straight-up fantasy. I mean, it could be argued that Ivalice was more you know, based on Europe as well, but they had a lot of you know fantasy creatures and stuff like that. Like I said, Fran was my favorite character. I love Fran. She was awesome. Uh, which begs the question, why did they enforce a whites-only boundary in the first place? <sighs> so history books exist, and uh, you can pick them up at uh, any local library. And uh, if you do some research into medieval Europe, you're not going to see a lot of ethnic diversity. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It just is. Okay. Just saying. Just saying. After acknowledging that the real world is more diverse than Valistia, he continued, The story we are telling is fantasy, yes, but it's also rooted in reality. Which is it, Yoshida? You can't say that your fictional world isn't bound to reality and then use reality to explain why black people can't exist in Valistia. Pick a struggle and stick with it, please. What's really frustrating about all this is that black and brown people have always existed in medieval Europe. Well, that's true. Um, it's true. If the creative leadership had done more research or checked their biases, I mean, it is true. And not, not a whole lot of them, though. I mean, it's, let's be honest. It's, it's pretty white in, the, in, in Europe in the medieval times. It's pretty white. Um, medieval Europe too white. Is that a hashtag? That should be a hashtag. Uh, then we might have noticed that black people have been living in Britain for 2,000 years or that some black Europeans were canonized in the Holy Roman Empire realized that Iberia was under Islamic rule for approximately 500 years. Instead of a realistic imagining of medieval Europe, we got Final Fantasy 16 instead. This game has magic and monsters and all kinds of crazy, crazy stuff going on, summons. Lots of things you could pick apart. Uh, basically, the vibe I get is he's probably like, why did you ask me this? It's a medieval game. It takes place in medieval Europe, which there are exceptions, but predominantly it was a pretty white place. I emailed, oh my God. I emailed Square Enix to ask how it decided on whether or not a story element violated the developer's narrative boundaries. And I'll let you know once I've gotten a response. You're going to be waiting for a while. Well, actually, no, there is a response on Kotaku. I just rewatched the latest trailer, the one embedded above and saw a giant winged lady throw ice shards. Apparently, it's not too over the top for fantasy realism, but bringing in real people from different races is a step too far. Not every game has to represent every group of people, and if you don't want to play the game, you don't have to play the game. You know, um, Or you could scrape together you know, $100, $200 million, and you can make your own fantasy game, and you can put whatever kind of people in it you want. I mean, look... Um, I think it's kind of a weird question. To ask. They, they keep putting the onus on Japanese people too. They're like, Hey, why, why, why isn't there, why aren't there more black people in anime? It's because they're not statistically, not a lot of brown people in Japan. There's not a lot of blonde haired blue eyed white people in Japan either. It's a pretty homogenous place. So yeah, and it could be argued that there aren't pink haired cat girls either, but still, but still, you know, just let, let them make the damn game. Just let them make the game. If, if, if it offends you, don't play the game. It's not hard. Uh, the localization director uh, told IGN that the game drew inspiration from Game of Thrones. But even Game of Thrones had uh, black side characters, albeit represented very poorly. Final Fantasy 16 might be uh, worse about representation than one of the most white bread shows on prestige television. So why did developers decide to include only white characters in the trailer? Yoshida has an answer that sounds entirely like a non-answer because he's probably like, why the hell are you asking me that? And also, there's an ad for the ADL on this page, too. That's appropriate. It can be challenging to assign distinctive ethnicities to either antagonist or protagonists without triggering. Oh, this is interesting. It can be challenging to assign distinctive ethnicities to either an antagonist or a protagonist without triggering audience uh, preconceptions, inviting unwarranted speculation, 
and ultimately stoking flames of controversy. What he's basically saying is, yes, we could have put uh, more brown people into the game, but if the media, the game's media, didn't like the portrayal of those brown people, like all the backlash we got over Barrett for so many years, then uh, we would have had to contend with that. So we're just going to say it takes place in Europe and everybody's white and that's it. Now go away. Uh, I believe that the developers can overcome the challenge without blowing up the internet and uh, God of War Ragnarok. It does feature uh, a black person as a major character in Norse mythology. A totally made up world can do the same. I think this is a reaction to them getting backlash before. I, I mean, if you're asking my personal opinion, um, I think Square has gotten backlash from a lot of these games journals before for improper, uh, you know, characterization or usage of non-white people in their games. And they were like, we don't even want to go there. So we're going to come up with a reason as to why we can't put any ethnic diversity into our games because did something, something, something Europe. Yep, that's it. Go away. Uh, and that's actually the side effect of all of these media outlets bitching about every damn thing is sometimes these companies just throw their hands up in the air and like, we're not even going to bother trying because there's no making you happy. No making you happy. No, we're not hiring a sensitivity reader, you know, to go over our, our game because piss off, right? Uh, these new quotes make me feel very cynical about Yoshida's comments from a previous interview. Uh, in August, he said he wanted to revitalize the Final Fantasy series by going back to fantasy. Um, you know? So anyway, uh, for all that Yoshida is lauded for, for being the man who saved Final Fantasy, his creativity is also limited by a genre that has never been fair to black and brown fans. So yeah, guys, uh, I, think you're, <laughs> I think you're starting to see some of these companies... Um, uh, kind of push back a little bit against this. The reason they're doing it is because there's no making there's no making anybody happy. And games journals are going to find something to bitch about. And uh, they're like, yeah, no, screw you. Uh, if you're going to be like that, because I, I do remember Square getting all kinds of backlash for its portrayal of non-white characters in the past. They're probably like, we're not even going to bother. We're not going to bother. Hope you're happy. Uh, this game is going to sell very, very well. Uh, the trailer looks amazing. Um you know, regardless of the content, regardless of, of this issue, it's not going to affect the sales at all. This is going to sell a shit ton of copies. I guarantee it. It looks so much better than Final Fantasy 15, which was never supposed to be Final Fantasy 15, by the way. It was a side story to 13, but uh, it looks really good. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. We'll talk later.